crazy. I got up at 7.30 in the morning and I opened the mini blind in my living room and I saw what looked like the Colorado River. And I said to my grandson, we got to get out of here very quick. Like, something's very wrong with this water. I've never seen a flood act this way. Uh, it was so different than any other flood I'd ever seen. Very scary. My name is Betty O'Hara. I have lived here for 63 years. I've been through 17 floods, and now this one. Uh, the 17 floods always scared us, but never did too much damage to any of us. But this one took our business. It took the first floor of my home, and um, it was kind of very, very scary for a little while. And I was out in it. My grandson came to get me in a truck, and when I got out in front of the gas station before it was taken, the, the water was up to the front tires. And I said to my grandson, we gotta get out of here very quick. Like, something's very wrong with this water. I've never seen a flood act this way. Uh, it was so different than any other flood I'd ever seen. Very scary. But anyway, my family's been here. The gas station was owned by five generations, and the fifth generation was in there now, and they were my grandsons, Kip and Corey, and I think they're going to build it right back up, and I'm going to take care of my old stagecoach in, and we're going to put that all back in shape, and I, I've always loved Priceville, and I will always be here. I, my perspective is a little bit different. Um, I grew up here and my family is here, but I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota now, so I've come home to help. And I can honestly say, this town two weeks ago when I saw it was completely devastated, but it's coming back to life every day. And that was is not possible without the grace of God and without the help of people just helping people. The government is helping, of course, as best they can, but that's not really what's doing it here. What's doing it here is the people and volunteers. We've had people in my, my mother's home that we didn't know from anything and they came in and they were willing to muck our basement. I mean filthy, disgusting work and they did it for days on end just to help us. But I think the thing that is really happening here, the flood may have took the town but it didn't take our spirit and it never will. And we will do what we can to survive because we're survivors anyway. You can't live in the mountains and not be. Um, so we will come back from this as best we can. I'm Ann O'Hara, um, one of the O'Haras of Prattsville. Uh, my mother lost the first floor of her home here, and my family business was washed out. That was there for five generations. As far as the devastation, I can't even begin to tell you what I've seen. It's, it's horrible, but the, but the most incredible thing I have to give forth is this community is probably the most positive community I've ever seen. And it always has been as children too. We were a really tight community and a wonderful community. And in things like this, you tend to forget until something like this happens. And what I see is one big, huge family here, whether by blood or not, we are, we're here for the long haul. This is, this is a really wonderful place to be. And hopefully with everything that they can do for us, that we can grow back and grow back stronger. Um, I can't ever think of my family not ever being from here. I don't want to ever have them have to disperse and leave. You know, the people here have been through a lot. And um, as you're making this documentary, it might be tempting to focus on the storm. But the story here really is the people the way they're coming together and the way that they're putting things back together. It's simply amazing to see it all come through and uh, the Salvation Army's been very pleased to be a part of that. It was crazy. I got up at 7.30 in the morning and I opened the mini blind in my living room and I saw what looked like the Colorado River. 
And at that point, I had six kids, four adults in the house. We got everybody up, tried to figure out what our plan was. And then at that point, I called uh, Judy Haskin, who has a house on the other side of the Steel Deck, Steel Deck Bridge, Canine Road. And she said the water was wiping away her road. Like, you know, you got to get out. So I called up to the Hideaway Hotel, which is up here on County Route 10, and tried to book rooms. And they had two rooms. So we said, great, we're getting out of here. We got in the car, and right over here behind the diner, a tree came in and blocked out and took out that road. So at that point, we were kind of stuck. We thought to go up maybe up on the Pratt Rock, but then the river split a little bit further down the road and was running behind us. So at that point, we kind of got sealed in. And we just kind of ran around, just trying to get what we could upstairs. Got all the kids situated. We got board games and not really thinking that it was going to be anything like it was. Like it was in a matter of maybe 20 minutes to a half an hour, it was on the road. Next thing I know, it was five feet out against my front porch. Wow. Uh, we had everybody upstairs. My son is 14, Kevin. We had to keep going down and just check in each room to make sure we had no structural cracks to send us out. You know what I mean? That was the last thing we wanted to do was to go into the water. You know, it was you know, a little hairy. It was just out of control. I mean, you saw trailers, whole houses floating by, just unbelievable sights. Oil tanks, a, a, a white um, Chevy Trailblazer, a big one, just rolled by. Like, and we were just sitting there, like watching it, like, like it was the strangest thing. But it was like I don't know, like it didn't really surprise you at that point, like. We called 911. There was absolutely nothing they could do for us at that point. You know, he more or less said, like, you guys need to preserve your own lives at probably around 11:30, 12 o'clock. You know, and then um, we had a helicopter come over and make sure we were okay. That was probably around three-ish. And then state trooper scuba team came in, probably around four or five on a fan boat. And again, just you know, everybody okay? And any medical attention? We're like, no, you know, just get us out of here. So they went back, they went further in and you know, they were a while and finally a trooper came and said, listen, you know, you guys are out of here, you know, you gotta give us a half an hour, grab whatever you can and we'll go. And then we were taken up to the Hunter's Field, which is a lovely sight to see. And you know, these guys were great up there, like, you know, beds and like I said, there was 10 of us walk walking in. They already probably had 60, 70 up there already. So yeah, you know, all in all we survived and you know. Great. I want to thank the churches for all the help. Um, my name is Charlie Gokul. I'm the director at Huntersville Christian Training Center. We've mobilized um, the church here in Prattsville to, to recover, rebuild, muck out, clean up. Um, right now we um, uh, have wide open doors to, to share the gospel and to reach people with the love of Christ. And so we need you to come. We need people to be here, to volunteer, to stay with us. Uh, teams, seven, eight, nine, ten, to, um, at a week at a time. Uh, we need resources to buy building materials, to uh, help people who had no flood insurance, to rebuild their homes, to get their lives back together. Sorry. Um, we have a website with, with ongoing, trying to keep that ongoing uh, information up. It's uh, hctconline.org. You can get information there. You can call our center. It's 518-299-3347. Uh, the key is volunteers. We need, we need volunteers. Um, we need resources. And uh, those two things are, the, are our main need right now. Uh, we need you to pray. We need lots of prayer. Uh, we need some to come to minister to our staff on the Hill, uh, just relieving them of some duties, giving them some downtime with their families. This probably, as far as I, I've been told, is about the worst uh, devastation that took place uh, in the Catskills. And, and the fact that this town has uh, 300 plus years of history, uh, which has uh, all been uh, contained in that Pratt Museum, which reflects not just Prattsville, but the entire mountaintop. But the devastation here has been so dramatic that unless people really are here to get a handle on what's going on, you really don't fully understand the level of, of disaster that we have here. Homes have been completely washed away. Uh, buildings have been taken down. Uh, 
the devastation is, has reached the point where it it's represents probably a third uh, or possibly a bit more of what the town was about prior to this storm. And we need a tremendous amount of help. These are grassroots people. Uh, most of them have had uh, family members go back for generations here. Uh, and, uh, and what we have here is, is grassroots people that love the area, love the town, uh, love what it represents, besides its beauty and its history. The trick is how do we get the help we need to be able to maintain this and bring this back uh, and even bring it into the 21st century. Uh, change uh, those areas that needed to be upgraded, we're going to do those that can be restored uh, to bring back the history of the town we're going to do. But we need a tremendous amount of help. The other thing we are doing is connecting with other um, communities here, Fleshman's, Arkville, Margaretville, uh, North Blenheim, uh, Middleburg, and Schoharie. Uh, locations right around our town um, where I have friends and, and families in those towns. And so um, we're already trying to resource those towns with volunteers' help. Some of the volunteers will work in Pratt's when they get here. Some will be going on to North Blenheim. Some will go to Lexington, uh, on to Middleburg, Harry. Uh, we're here for the long haul. Hi, my name is George Williams, and I'm with Huntersfield Christian Training Center. And uh, first of all, I'd just like to say thank you to all of the folks who have reached out and have helped us, come alongside us, and have worked at building Prattsville back to where it was. We have been overwhelmed by the show of support from volunteers, from organizations, from the brothers and sisters in the church. Uh, it has been overwhelming and it has been much appreciated. Uh, to this point, uh, the flood that happened some 17 days ago, uh, we are still in great need of volunteers. We have had um, 800 volunteers a day the first weekend. Uh, the second weekend, we've had 400 volunteers each day. And uh, Monday through Friday, we have 30 to 40 volunteers. Uh, so the need is great. Uh, the project is going to be long, probably one to two years to see it through completion. 117 homes have been affected. Uh, 42 have been condemned. We are obviously working on the remainder 80 some odd homes uh, that need to be rebuilt. This has been an area that has been economically depressed before the flood. So we have a number of people that do not have insurance, uh, a number of people that are elderly in this community, and they are in desperate need of our help. So again, in regards to all the volunteers that have showed up, we do want to thank you. And for so many that have offered their prayers to us, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. This has been a long two and a half weeks, and it is a long 18 to 24 months to come. Uh, so we're asking that you come out and support and to help, uh, help these folks of this historic rich town to rebuild what once was. And again, thank you for all that have come out and the many donations, both monetary and through food and water and uh, just prayer support. We ask that those prayers continue. Thank you. probably take a, a year minimum to even get uh, back to normalcy for some of the people. So uh, uh, keep us in your prayers. Uh, come and help. Thank you.